After spending nearly two weeks on board the USS New York, the lone Benghazi suspect arrived on American soil over the weekend and pled not guilty in a federal court on Saturday. Now the Obama administration insisting on trying Abu al Qatala here in a U.S. federal court. So what can we expect? And is this decision the correct one? Joining us now is a former federal prosecutor and a policy fellow at the National Review, Andrew McCarthy. Nice to see you this morning. Good to see you. So what happens next for this guy? Well, now he'll be, uh, you know, formally arraigned eventually. With the, This was the first appearance that he had in court. How shocking that it was on a Saturday when nobody was uh, sure. paying much attention. Uh, but what will now happen is the formal process will start. The case will be assigned to a judge and uh, they go forward from there. Yeah, it sounds like they, they parked the New York in the Chesapeake Bay and choppered him directly into the Washington, D.C. area. Andrew, um, one of your problems with this whole thing is the fact that we are now back to September 10th mentality when yeah, it comes to, criminal, to adjudicating these things. Yeah, it's exactly right. Even enemy combatant terrorists now are back to being mere criminal defendants. We're back to uh, treating terrorism globally as a law enforcement problem rather than a national security problem that's handled under the laws of war. Sure. But, but I mean, as a lawman yourself, I mean, what does that say about our judicial system, that we can't handle it somehow, that we need to send this guy off to Guantanamo Bay to get justice? Well, no, the, the, the problem has never been being able to convict terrorists in court. We've always been able to do that. Our process does allow that. The problem is the national security price tag on that. Under the laws of war, you're allowed to detain people indefinitely. You don't have to have the public trial that forces you to disclose all kinds of information the government has in its intelligence files to the enemy during the war while the enemy is trying to kill not only Americans, but our men and women in harm's way. Sure, and that's what's going to happen here. During the discovery process, the bad guy's side, defense team, is going to get whatever secrets are germane to this war on terror. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, this guy has been uh, described in the media as the ringleader. Mm -hmm. Well, you need a ring to be the ringleader. He's the only one who's here. So we'll be giving him all the intelligence that we have on the Al-Qaeda conspiracy, all the intelligence we have on what was going on in Benghazi in the run-up to September 11th and the aftermath. And he's the only one we have here which means we'll be educating the enemy about what we know about the enemy. I'm curious about the foreign soil aspect of this. We hear about enemy combatants, right? On foreign soil, mm -hmm. that's how they become an enemy, an enemy combatant. But in this case, a U.S. consulate, U.S. soil, right? Is that the rub here, that that's why he's not being tried as an enemy combatant? No. The, the, uh, if you remember, in 1998, our embassies were struck by al-Qaeda in, yeah. in Kenya and Tanzania. And we brought some of the al-Qaeda operatives that we were able to capture to, the, to New York for a trial, which took place in 2000, 2001. The interesting thing about that, though, and, and I think this points up the ineffectiveness of the criminal justice system, most of the people that we, um, who were involved in that indictment, like Osama bin Laden himself, Zawahiri sure. and others, they couldn't be captured till we went over to the laws of war. Mm. Absolutely. Well, it, that's what's happening right now. All yeah. right. Good to Andrew, see you. thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for coming in.